So at this point, I've got this project and it's fully functional. There's still little details here and there, but in the interest of time, we're going to move on. If you haven't had a chance to print out the instructions yet, you can do it a little later. But we're going to look at instructions number nine. And what we actually can do here is we don't need a notepad anymore. We're done for the moment editing all of the files of the project. So I'm just going to close completely Notepad. You can do this if you'd like. I'm going to close it because I need to free up some resources. I've got a lot of apps running and my computer slows down, so I'm going to close Notepad. I'm actually going to close my emulator also. I don't need to see this in the emulator and my web browser. I'm just going to close everything, actually. Um, and uh, not the command prompt yet. I'm still going to need that one. But I am closing my other items, web browsers and devices and such. And I will look at instruction number nine, give us a general overview, then we'll, then we'll do it together. Um, over on the, um, the network folder, remember you've got Campus 9, signing your final APK. I'm going to drag a copy to my desktop if you don't have a copy of that. And then we'll open that PDF to view it. When your app is complete, you must sign it with your developer certificate before publishing. So we need to create a developer certificate and then we need to apply it to our app. Every time we've been doing Cordova build, it's created a debug version of the project. It's not ready for the app stores. The app stores will reject a debug version. The debug version is for debugging it, for testing it. It's not a real final version. So there's two ways to do it. Um, and one of the ways is via Android Studio. That's what I've got listed in my instructions here. So I've got step number one, launch Android Studio. Um, I'm just running it in the background because mine's really slow, but I'll show you what I'm doing here. Uh, cancel that. Okay. Okay, so Again, mine's really slow, so I'm going to skip ahead. But on my in, on your instructions there, okay, on your instructions, launch Android Studio. So just go to your Start menu. This is Android Studio, which is which is software that's installed like a regular software. Go to your your Start menu and search Android Studio. You should get the Android Studio icon to appear. Click on that and yours might load up faster than mine but it's going to load up and it will have a, a screen about opening a project start a project we're going to choose to start a project and we saw this a while ago last month that if we use Android Studio we can uh, use that editor to create a project we're going to create we're going to click the button to start a project and we're just going to click next 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 until it's finished we just want to launch a brand new blank document again i already started my process because mine's going to take forever um, so i won't be able to show you exactly but i'm just going to click you know start the start a new project it should make sense for you click start new project Go to the screens. Eventually, you'll get some kind of screen like this, and it'll be scanning files and all of that stuff. So just take a moment to launch it, like my instructions say, and we'll go on in just a moment. Wait until everything initializes and indexes. That little bar at the bottom eventually will go away. You just want to create a project, a blank, empty project, so that we can use the tool to create this the developer certificate. Um, the idea here is we've been working in creating this debug project. We want to create this certificate that says we are a developer, we're an official developer. 
and we're going to create this app and it's going to be signed by us it'll be officially by us my web design my app design company and then I'm gonna submit it to the stores um, Google Play or Amazon um, or you know iTunes store and that app will be attached to me I, I will have vouched for that app so that I, I'm a developer but in order to create this uh, developer certificate we're gonna do it via Android Studio if we were going the route of the iPhone there's a completely different process a little more complicated and that's where we would have to pay Apple that ninety nine dollars a year to become a developer as an Android developer we can create our own certificate from the free software and um, We'll see how to do that as soon as my project loads. Do you see yours is saying right here? Indexing and this little thing is growing, hopefully. Is any, has it finished for anyone yet? All right, let, me, let me get back to the instructions as I wait for that. Because the procedure will be that there will be a screen where we will create, where we will generate a certificate. And it's just going to be some, some boxes that we fill in. So I'm, I keep saying there's two ways to do this. One way is through the pretty interface of, of Android Studio. You just fill in some boxes, click OK, we're done. The other way is to write a long command. I think it's going to be easier to do it this way, just fill in some boxes rather than the command, because if you don't type this long command exactly right, you'll have to do it again. So that's why I'm not including it here, but we can look up later how to, how to create a, an Android developer certificate via command prompt. And we just do a search for that. Everyone will tell you how to do it. But we will do it via the studio. So eventually you'll get down at the bottom. It should say finished. You don't have anything else here processing. You've got this basic, simple Hello World app. Raise your hand if you're at this point. Did you get your Hello World app? Anyone still waiting for the for the yours to process? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. There is a part where you are going to keep going next. Okay, so one of the reasons to create this certificate file through here, the Android Studio, again, because you'll have a nice, pretty interface where you just fill in a few boxes, click Generate, and it does it. Of course, one of the downsides of this is look at how we're waiting all this while just for this thing to load up to click a button. There is going to be a way to do this also via command prompt through a really long line, which I don't have memorized. I always have to look it up. And um, if you do it right here, it's just one command, enter, done. It'll process it and such, of course, but it would be one command. And that's the big idea about why sometimes we, we do this command prompt rather than going to a pretty interface. You have a lot of overhead on this app. It's a one gigabyte app, and it takes all this RAM and time. But anyway, we're up, we should be up to this point on the instructions. 
okay, we've got the we've got this empty file open, the empty project. Click build from the menu to generate sign APK. At the top do you see build? And click Generate Signed APK. So there's two things from this screen. If you've already got a developer certificate, we're going to say use this developer certificate. We don't have one yet. We're new. So the way we're going to use this screen is we're going to create a new um, they have different names. This is what the confusing thing is. Developer certificate, key store, but basically this is going to be a file that identifies you as a developer. It's saying, where's your file? We don't have one yet. We're going to create one. So click create new. Again, here's this screen here. This screen here, then we fill this in and we're an official developer. We've got a certificate which says that we're a developer. Uh, so first we need to choose where are we saving this file. Now the, in this class we're developing this app and it's just to learn how this works you can um, we're gonna create this key store file, this developer file. You can create as many of these as you want. You can create this one officially, unofficially, for fake, for real, whatever. If you do decide to create this certificate right now, you want to make sure you wrote somewhere your password. I don't know your password. There's no way to bring it back, really. You need to save this password that we're about to create if you want to continue to use this key file. If you forget it, no problem. Generate another one. We can create as many as we want. But the problem is, if I publish my app, with my key store that I made this month and next month when I'm going to upload version 2 and I forget my key file and I have to create a brand new one, suddenly I'm a new developer. So I will not be able to update my app from last month. This key file identifies me as a developer for and the correct developer for every version of my app. So if I lose this file, if I don't remember the password, I have to create a new one. But then I'm a new developer and I'm going to lose access to my old app. So I believe I have listed down here a little bit later. We'll get to this part. Now that you have made your file, store it in a safe place. You will need this in all your future apps. It validates you as the creator of your app. Make a backup. Then make a backup of the backup. Because this file is your ID as a developer. We'll get to that part in a moment. So here we're going to say, where are we going to save this file? Click those three dots to choose a folder. We get this screen here, and which is different than the usual screen. Uh, we have home, desktop, project directory. Uh, I'm going to choose the desktop. This doesn't have the usual Windows Explorer screen, does it? I can go to my flash drives. Put it on the desktop is fine. Uh, you click on these three dots right there. And then at the very top, you click on the second icon, which is your desktop. It asks for a name. This can be anything you want, and it'll be .jks. Uh, I think it stands for Java Key Store. So anything you want here, Victor Apps, anything you want. This is the name of your file that will identify you as a developer. It will automatically add .jks. So click OK. It takes you back to the screen which shows you I'm going to save my victorapps.jks file to my desktop. And we were, we're now going to need two passwords. One password to use this file, and then one password to identify us as a particular person, as a particular developer. Because we can have multiple developers in this file. This file is like the certificate 
for the company and then in the file can be this developer and that developer this person that person and then each one has a sort of a separate account in this JKS file so that's why it's going to ask us what's the password to access the JKS file the key store and what's the password of a particular person in this company I'm going to use the same password on both it's more secure if you use different passwords but I'm just going to use the same one again I don't know what this password is you know what your password is so write it down type a password twice to access the key store so you can't see it but I'm going to put a password here confirm it can be as complex as you want nothing's going to tell you here about weak password strong password technically you can make a password that is Z that is the letter Z and that'll accept it it won't care I would recommend of course have a secure password because this is your this is your ID as a developer Um, alias that is uh, la your last name or the name of your development company lowercase no spaces um, so basically my file I'm calling it Victor apps I'm going to use the same Victor apps if you don't want that name of the file, yeah, you can click three dots again and uh, choose another name. Can we change this later or maybe next? I think we can change it later, but I would really operate in terms about this is it. Because um, this is going to create you know, a complex certificate file which might not be editable. Because if it were editable, forgeries could happen. I think we can edit it, but let's assume we can't. And again, for this class, maybe just make it up. Put Darth Vader here. That's fine. Just to learn how this works. And then later on, follow the instructions again to create your real certificate. Ask for a password. I'm going to use the same one. More secure would be to use different ones. It's like two doors to get into this thing. The first door, the second door. Use the same key here. Validity. Uh, I believe the... Android documentation requires us at least 25 years. Uh, here, this, this certificate will be valid for the next 25 years. So in the year 2030, you're going to have to create another certificate. Um, and then this next stuff here, okay. More details about yourself. So first and last name. You can write here normal words organizational unit, that's just a fancy term. What's your job title? I'm just going to put app developer. My organization is Victor Apps. Actually, if you think about it, in our app, in the config file, just a little sidebar here, on, on my config file for my app, I wrote here Petamora Apps LLC. You can keep that consistent, it doesn't matter. But I will. So if you remember, what did you write in your config file for your app as your author? I'm going to use the same name. City or locality, San Diego, state. CA for California, country, U.S. I'm going to click OK. Stuff is going on behind the scenes. It's going to process the what you wrote in and then it's going to save that JKS file and then eventually 
I don't believe it gives you any feedback. It's just going to do it. When you clicked OK, did you did you get to your result? Why is that? Uh, it went back to like uh, create new and then say next. Oh, perfect. If after you pass that screen, it takes you back to this screen right. and it fills it in, yes. good. Let's wait there a moment while I finish mine. But if it worked, it doesn't tell you anything like, congratulations, you're an app developer. It just takes you back here and it fills in the key store path and then we'll, we'll wait there. Yeah. Do my For some reason, I got an error. I think on mine I either just had a little bad luck or maybe I wrote, because I wrote LLC with a dot and stuff. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But anyway, uh, it took me back then to this screen and filled in, here's your developer's file. Here's the password and the alias you wrote a moment ago. Did everyone get back to this screen? Okay. That's all we need to do here. Cancel that. Close Android Studio. Yep, just cancel it and close Android Studio. We just wanted to use Android Studio to create this, this file. This, that was the point of Android Studio, to create this very important file, this JKS file, this Java key store, this developer certificate. We canceled the part of uh, applying this certificate to that blank app. Oh. That's what we canceled. We still clicked OK to create the app, uh, to create the JKS file, which it did. It's the key store is on my desktop right there. So if this was official, if I really wanted to make apps and that was my key store, again, I'm going to back that up on this flash drive. And on that flash drive, I'm going to put it on my Google Drive. I'm going to back it up on my folder. If this was my legitimate developer uh, certificate file, that's, you're going to guard that with your life. Because if you're going to make future apps and you lose that or lose your password, you have to create another one, and suddenly you're a new developer and you lose your previous apps. I'm going to take a moment to put this on my flash drive. Even though this is just a school project, I am going to save that into my flash drive. I don't want to suddenly have the power go out and I lose it. So I'm just copying it to my flash drive. So we were doing these steps here, step five. We filled in this stuff password, names, etc. Click OK. It's going to take you back to the Generate Sign Wizard. Cancel that. Exit Studio. Now we have this JKS file. Store in a safe place, etc. etc. This validates you as a, as a creator of the app. Back it up and back up the backup. That was part one. Creating this certificate. Part two is we're going to use the certificate to create a, a final version of our app, a, a, a release-ready version of our app that we can upload to the app stores. So now we're going to build our app for final release with our developer certificate, the key store. Um, On, on step one, I just have um, do one final Cordova build, which is kind of optional. I'm going to skip it, actually, because we're going to build twice. So I'm going to skip number one, but this is just to make sure your app is updated. Copy your key store file to your project folder inside of the platforms folder, Android folder, So uh, I'm going to 
go go to where your apps are at on my flash drive I've got my project my SDCE you're going to open your project folder in in an explorer window just open the my SDCE project you're going to open the platforms folder the Android folder. So my instructions are saying you need to copy your key store file into this Android uh, into this Android file into this Android folder. And copy and paste. Just put a copy of your key store into this Android folder. That's what my instruction right here was saying. Copy your key store into that folder, Android inside a platform. We're going to create a simple text file, which then tells this app, use this key store next time we do Cordova build. So I'm saying here, we're just going to create an empty document. In Windows, we can do right click, new text document. And we need to save it as release-signing.properties. We're going to remove the text part of it. So here in my, we just need to put an empty text file in the project. In the Android project folder, just right-click on an empty spot, right-click New, Text Document, and we're calling it release-signing. dot properties and take out the dot txt. We can do this backwards. We can open notepad. We can save this file into the folder. Or this, I kind of think of it as a shortcut. We create a text file, rename it to this, and then we'll open it in notepad. Or we can open notepad, save it into the project. Yes, it's going to complain. Are you sure you want to change the extension? Yes, we know what we're doing. We're app developers. So release dash signing, make sure you spell signing correctly, dot properties. Let's open that in Notepad. Notepad plus plus. So uh, we created that text file. We're going to uh, open it at Notepad, and we're going to add two lines of code. Store file, capital S, equals, no spaces, the name of your JKS file. Next line, key alias equals the name of what you wrote on that screen that asked you for an alias, which I already forgot mine. should have written it down. Um, you want to right-click. Edit with Notepad. And then on line one, store file equals minus called, what did I call mine here? Uh, Victor apps.jks, whatever your JKS file is called. Next line, key alias equals. When we were in Android Studio, there was a box there that asked us for an alias. And I had recommended use the same name that you used in the JKS name. So I think that's what I called mine. So here we're telling our app, this is our JKS file, and we are this particular developer inside of this JKS file. A little bit later in a moment, it's going to ask us for our passwords. So I'm going to save that file. Confirm that you spelled store file, capital F, and key alias, capital A. I'm going to save this 
and we should uh, we should close the file. We should just close all of Notepad. Back in the command prompt, now we're going to type Corova build Android space dash dash, there's two dashes, release. We've been doing Cordova build Android before. We've been doing Cordova build. But here we're specifying build the Android version. If we simply do Cordova build, in our case it would build the Android version and the browser version. If we also had the iPhone version, it would create the iPhone version. But at this point, since we're targeting Android, we're being specific. Cordova build Android and space dash dash release. Now it's going to uh, want to actually create the public ready version of the app. Cordova build Android space dash dash release. It's going to behave pretty much the same as before. It's going to process a bunch of files. Eventually, you're going to get a, a basic pop-up that asks you for your password, your password for your JKS file. Type in that password. Then it's going to pop up to ask you your password for your alias, which in my case, I wrote the same password twice. If all of that is successful, then you'll get the build successful. And in the folder, which we'll see in a moment, in our in our output folder, we will have a brand new android-release.apk. This whole time, we've been dealing with android-debug.apk file. But if this works, if I remembered my password from 10 minutes ago, uh, this will create a release-ready version. There we go. It's going to pop up. Enter your key store. Password. And then this is the actual key password. I use the same one. If I didn't type it right, I believe it would have told me. It's going to continue on its process, so that, that's new. By adding the flag dash dash release, it gives us those pop-ups. What's the password for your JKS file? And what's the password for that particular alias, that particular developer? Um, it's going to proceed. And if this worked, at the very end it'll say successful, and it'll tell me you've got a new release file. Um, it seems to me the yeah. Apple folder, meaning the, the Android folder, right? Yes, we'll see that in a moment when mine is done. But yes, it's going to be back on the. I mean, when we type, when we type the Android and release. Oh, that I'm I'm still well. Uh, good point. I'm at the I'm at the root level of my of my project. Yes, I in my Cordova in command prompt here. I am at the top level. I don't. I, I think we're okay if we're in a subfolder. It doesn't matter, but you do want to run that command when you're in the app project. Because I copy your work in the my uh, SDC and I am inside a folder mm -hmm. at the rooftop, and then it say uh, current working directory is not blow up this project. Hmm. Well, we'll check in one moment. Eventually, build successful. Blah 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 inside of platforms, Android build outputs APK, Android values. All the while, all throughout this whole course, when we've been doing this, if you have an eagle eye, it was always telling us at the end, Android debug.apk. And now I've got the release version. I did remember my own password for me, and then now I've got my release ready version of my APK file. So that's telling me in my in my window here, 
I put the release signing properties and the JKS file. But this is telling me, and my instructions are saying, if you then go into uh, the build folder, outputs, APK, Android release. The debug ones are still hanging around there. Those are not going to go away. But notice that was back at 7. And this is the one that I did right now, release 2015. So that is your app. That uh, 800 kilobytes, it's tiny, it's less than a megabyte. Uh, that one megabyte app, I mean that one megabyte file, rounding up, that's my app. And I just copy it to the desktop. My developer certificate and my app, .apk, Android package. That's my app. We're getting close to the end of the day, so when we come back next time, okay, I've got an app. How do I get it to people? We're going to see there's, a, there's about two or three different ways. The, the most legitimate way, we'll see. Uh, but basically, if you know anything about side-loading apps, there's your file to side-load. Um, but we'll talk about it next time. There's our file. Now I want to publish it to the world. That's what we'll do on the last day. After all of this time and effort, learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Android SDK, blah, 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 PouchDB, there's my app. And then the next step when we come back is, let's have the world see it. So if it worked for you, great. Um, if it didn't, we'll have a little lab time. But um, how many of you did get your release file? Raise your hand. Great. Now take your hand and pat yourself on the back. You are an Android developer. And I'm just noting here uh, one last thing. Move it to your desktop and name it, for example, My App One Release APK. Whatever name you want it, because it's just called Android Release. I could call it My SDCE. I'm recommending here My SDCE One because this is going to be version one. When I publish this and it's out to the world and then next month or whatever I want to make version two, I do the whole process, I do the I do the build release, and it's gonna give me a new file called exactly the same thing. I'm gonna call it, however, my SDC2 release. When I make version three of the app, my SDC3 dash release. This, this name here is totally optional, but I'm just suggesting when you do this for a while, you're gonna get confused perhaps, is this version 1 of the project, version 2? So I'm saying, put a version number in the file name. Congratulations, you have a release-ready version of your app to distribute. So we're going to wrap up at this point. Um, we're going to do some lab time. I'll turn the printer back on if you want a copy of that. And again, everything that we did today, I'm uploading it to my channel. If you haven't asked for the video link, remember to send me an email. I'll send you the video so you can catch up with any of this because it does, there's, there's a lot of moving pieces. And these handouts are useful and such, but it might be also useful to replay the videos. So that's it for the moment. We'll, when we come back next time, we'll take the final lap.